What's up, hippie fam? It's Mike back at it again, and today we've got another DIY how-to video. Welcome back. So today we're gonna to be talking about these bad boys right here, the Crank Brothers cleat. So I'm gonna go over a few things. Firstly, I'm gonna go over how to check to see if your cleats need to be replaced and what signs of wear you need to look out for. And then I'm gonna go over the different types of cleats that Crank Brothers offers and what would be better suited for you and your riding style. So let's go ahead and dive into this. <laughs> So what prompted me to make this video was recently I was riding over at this place called San Lee. And uh, if you guys are familiar with my videos, I ride there a lot. It's always open throughout the rain, snow, any weather elements, you know. Uh, and over in the one tech section, I went OTB. Hot ledges. Oh! <laughs> and I couldn't figure out why. And upon reviewing the footage, I saw that my feet unclipped, just literally pulling up, it unclipped. And I ended up checking the bottoms of my shoes over here and I saw that the cleats were worn. So as you can see, if we can get this to zoom in, that is really worn. There are supposed to be tips on these cleats right there and right there. So these are the easy release cleats, which mean that they have more of a rounded section on the top and on the bottom versus the standard cleats that you see come with your pedals that have more of a sharp edge to them so they hold in better. Well, needless to say, I ended up looking at these and they were mangled and I was wondering why they wore out so fast. And upon doing some research, I found out that they're made out of brass so you don't ruin your egg beaters. And Crank Brothers recommends that you change these cleats yearly, which I couldn't agree more after experiencing what I experienced. But this is the right shoe. This is, I am right foot dominant. So I unclip with this side way more than my left shoe and just for a comparison, hopefully I can get them to zoom in. That's the wear on them. And even on the inside right here, like where the lip catches, you can see that it's really worn, which makes sense because brass is a lot softer metal than the steel egg beater is. That's a really good design because if you think about it, you're replacing cleats instead of pedals. And Crank Brothers pedals have a premium price tag on them for a very good reason. So without further ado, let's dive into the replacement of these cleats. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and talk about the different signs you should be looking for as far as wear and tear goes. This is my right shoe. I, as I stated before, I'm right foot dominant. And so this is the foot that I unclip the most with whenever I'm like just stopping the bike and to gain my balance. Uh, as you can see here, We've got some severe rounded edges. As you can see in here, right there, where I'm pointing with the Allen key, that's really worn out as well, which means that this actually became shorter inside, which means that the egg beater clip can't really hold on to it. And it definitely felt like a lot more wobbly, meaning like the degree change, it, it wasn't as firm anymore. And now I do run Crank Brother uh, DH mallets on there, which have the pins that come up. As you can see, you know, they, they dig in the shoe right here and all that. But my left foot, not as badly worn, but still pretty worn. Same thing, you see really rounded edges. And same thing in here, in this little groove right here where the egg beater sits. Really, really worn. As you can see, this isn't steel or anything. This is brass. And these are the rose colored brass ones, which indicate that they're easy release. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox the cleats so you guys can get a side by side comparison of what the old ones and new ones look like. So let's get to that. So here's the box of brand new Crank Brothers cleats. As mentioned before, I do go with the easy release. And as you can see, it's indicated on the box that they have the 10 degree release and the six degree float. 
If you flip the box around, you're greeted with a nice diagram that gives you a visual explanation of what float and release actually mean. So without further ado, let's dive into this box and see what comes in this tiny little thing. When you open up the box, you're greeted with a nice bag of goodies. You get some nice cleats that are labeled L and R for left and right. You get some new bolts, as well as some plastic shoe protectors that go underneath the cleats so they don't damage your shoes. Also inside of the box, you're greeted with a nice little piece of paper that he has a nice QR code on it. Absolutely love that Crank Brothers does this. They save a lot of paper doing this and they just keep it mainstream with keeping it digital. So if you don't know how to do it, you can also scan this code, but that's what this video is for. I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to replace your cleats. All right, so this is what you're greeted with. You've got two cleats. You've got two of these black thingies that let you slide it left and right. You've got your plastic shoe protectors right here, as well as an assortment of bolts, which is actually very, very nice. These are out of order. I had to fix them. So depending on what kind of shoes you run, you know, they give you a super duper short one or they give you a nice long one, which is pretty dope. I don't remember seeing that last time. So like I stated before, I wanted to do a side by side comparison. As I showed you before, this was the old cleat. And this is the new one. As I was stated, you remember these, these little points here completely rubbed off. Even over here, as I stated, the uh, egg beater would wear this part out, this flat part right here, brand spanking new. I'm so stoked to get these on. But I wanted to give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison because it's night and day. It, I can see it from right here. It's just absolutely mangled, but then again, I ride every single day, at least every day that it doesn't rain, you know? So I put these things through its paces, and I'm pretty happy with it. So let's go ahead and get these bad boys installed. All right, to get these installed, you are going to need a size 3 millimeter Allen key, as well as some sort of torque wrench, because MTB cleats, you are supposed to torque them down in between 5 to 6 newton meters. Now... Online, some people are going to tell you three to four. I use three to four for road bike cleats. Those are the cleats that have three bolt holes, and those are more secure. For the two bolt holes, MTB, I always do the five to six, and I always shoot for six just to be safe. You don't want any failures to be happening on the trail. So what I usually like to do is grab the shoe with old cleats on it and I'll grab a paint marker. Now this is a water soluble uh, paint marker so I can literally use a cleaner or soap and water, wash this right off. And what I'll do is I will draw an outline around so I don't have to guess where my cleats are. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, set that aside and we'll go ahead and give this a minute to dry so it doesn't smear when we go ahead and unbolt our old cleats. All right, so it's been a couple minutes now. It's dried, not to worry about smearing so I don't mess up my install. Now it's time to unbolt these cleats. All right, so there you have it. That's the old cleat and time to throw this sucker in the bin because it's useless now. All right, so when installing your new cleat, you wanna make sure that you grab the one that matches the shoe. What I mean by that is this one has an R, and right now I'm doing my right foot. And you wanna make sure that the R is at the toe edge of your shoe, meaning this R right here being pointed towards your toes, and you wanna place that and match that right up with your lines that you just drew. And then you wanna go ahead and Put the little black piece right there that allows you to slide it. And then you take which bolt you need according to which shoe you use. Uh, what you could do a little trick is take your old one and just match it up to what you already used. And bam, problem solved. And also another little trick that I usually do so you get the proper torque setting. And also you don't fuse this to your shoes and you end up having to buy new shoes later on. Uh, is you just dab it in some grease. All right, so now that you've got them finger tight, we're gonna go ahead and torque them down. Now, 
I use this simple handheld torque wrench. Got this from YT when I got my YT Jeffsy. You just gotta make sure it's calibrated. With these little hand ones that I see around everywhere, you basically just turn this little outer part, and as you can see from the dial, the little needle goes. You wanna make sure that it's set to zero, and that's how you calibrate these hand ones. Uh, if you end up having one of the automotive ones, same thing, you just make sure it's zeroed out and then you're good to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure these are torqued down to six Newton meters. All right, and there you go. That's the right one installed. And for the left shoe, you follow the same process and you've got your Crank Brothers cleats installed. Thanks so much for staying tuned with me. And if you guys liked the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and also turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. It lets me know that you're enjoying the content and you want to see more of what I'm making. So thanks so much again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.